Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. This is episode 12 of our drawer making workshop, and I'm starting to run out of drawers, but I scrounged. And now you're going to start seeing some of the stuff that's a little odd, maybe. I, uh, over the years, every once in a while, I'd get an idea and I'd work on it, and it, sometimes it would work out and sometimes it wouldn't. So this is a chest of drawers that I made. It's out of poplar and mahogany. It's kind of a nautical theme. I used to work on a tugboat. Really like splicing rope. So what I did to dress this up is I, I uh, cut a, uh, a half round groove in the front edge. I made this out of poplar, so obviously I wasn't very serious because I wouldn't use poplar otherwise. And I just kept working with it. And in fact, if you turn around here and have a look at this first. So this was just kind of a, uh, it was mitered, but then it was stepped in here. And I don't remember why I did it. But I do remember that the uh, miter didn't close. So the way I had planned to use splines, so you can see that there are mahogany splines, and they're, they're cut with the table saw across like this. So because the, the uh, miter didn't close tight, I, after it was glued up, I ran the saw down through, I can't remember how I did it, but I did it, and then I inserted this, this uh, mahogany spline, which actually looks pretty neat. And then I put mahogany feet on the bottom, now, I know I wasn't serious about this. I can't even remember when this was built. Because if I was, I would never have cut these dados all the way through. But the back is sitting. And the advantage of having the back sit in a, re in a groove all the way around is that it dresses it up so that you don't see stuff like this. Had that been a rabbit, then that wouldn't have been, that, you would not have seen that. And again, two screws and each divider to help s prevent it from sagging. It's, uh, I did do a nice finish on it too because it's nice and smooth. So that's how the, the uh, miter, the end grain miter is reinforced with these splines. Of course, your grain always has to run this way so that it has strength across its width, or across its length, sorry. And then, as I said, I put, so you notice this little mahogany foot comes out and is radiused on the front so that the rope comes up here, and then that's just mitered across and down. And then, of course, for handles, I made them out of rope as well. And you know what? I'll call it cute. Usually I don't like to call my furniture cute, but this one is. So the drawer fronts come all the way through, the drawer sides come all the way through. And this was back when I used to make them really skinny. So those pins are just the width of the uh, saw blade. And the whole idea was to bring it all the way through. And again, you have, so you have mahogany, 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 mahogany. And I also, I, I just, I like to experiment a little bit. So the drawer fronts are flush with the side and then the dividers are set back in. So again, it just adds a little bit of depth to the front of the drawer and gives it a little bit of visual interest. They actually work nice. We pull them out and look and see what's going on inside. So it's a typical drawer frame. Now, when you do this, you've got a stable drawer frame, meaning the... Uh, the frame is, consists of people, pieces in their length, so it's stable this way. Because it's mostly length, it's going to be stable this way and across from the back. So the drawer frame, the outside dimensions of the drawer frame are not going to move. However, you've got it fastened to the side of a solid wood piece that is going to move. So that is sitting in a dado, as you can tell because we cut it on the back side. I'm pretty sure that, that this is shouldered, so the dado is narrower than this. And then there's a shoulder cut on both sides just to make it a little neater. And I can't remember, but I most likely glued the first part so that this dimension never changes. Everything, all the movement goes out the back. And I have, I have it secured with one screw on each side. Actually, I only have it with one. I don't know what I'm doing there. I, I really can't quite figure this out, but I know what I'm doing here is because I've got a double washer on there. So that screw is sitting in a larger diameter hole. Yeah, right, because all your movement is going to go this way. That screw is sitting in a larger diameter hole. There's two washers, so it's metal on metal moving, and it'll allow it to move. What I don't figure out is how come I didn't do it on this side, but I did do it on that side as well. Not always a reason to my rhyme. And as far as the drawers go, it's mahogany drawer sides. There's mahogany substitute. It's a plywood bottom. Draw the... Uh, the Tails go wild on the back, but I've always done that. 
drawer back has to sit lower than the drawer side so it doesn't drag on the underneath when you're pulling it open. No finish on the inside. Someone asked, actually this is finished, but that's not. I don't think, anyway. Can't smell anything on it. Nothing fancy about the drawer fronts. As I said, I was just kind of playing with an idea. And I think it's, maybe you could even call it quaint. But the drawers fit nicely. And this has been, this has to be at least, at least 20 years old, but it might even reach back farther than that, maybe 25 years. It's held up pretty good. Doesn't show a lot of signs of wear. There's a little bit of some staining on the front, but nice thing about that, if I wanted to, I could go in and refinish it. It's solid wood, so you don't have to worry about having to go through veneer. Anyway, now, next point. You'll notice, before we get into our topic of the night, that I have a new t a different t-shirt on. So this is our first one. This is the wood is good. Now, I asked you last night and some people responded and I'm very grateful. What we're asking you to do is just su help support our Purple Heart Project by promoting it. I find it strange that 3,000 people have watched and we've had less than few, le fewer than 20 people have ordered a t-shirt. And I'm thinking there's gotta be, there's gotta be more support for this out there than that. But here's how we're going to sweeten the deal. If you order a t-shirt to help us promote the Purple Heart Project, we're going to send you a little bottle of fantastic maple syrup to go with it. Now, I know a guy named Michael who's just chomping at the bit. He'll probably order another t-shirt so he can get another bottle of this. But this is dark. Actually, they call it amber. So at different, different times and in different areas, sometimes the maple syrup will be a little stronger tasting than others. Most of the stuff that you buy is very mild. This has that deep, rich taste. It's just fantastic. We actually put one of these usually in with most orders, typically not with t-shirts, but we will for this cause to uh, make this even more appealing. So please, buy a t-shirt. Check right there. That's how you get it. You can either get the turquoise, the, uh, what do we call it? It's not turquoise. It's teal or, or uh, navy blue. Help us promote our Purple Heart Project where we bring combat wounded veterans in six times a year, 36 total each year, and treat them to a week of very intense, very intense. Hand to a woodworking, we send them home with a full kit of tools. We're even now providing them with a bench so they can go home and set up a little shop and it becomes their, what some people call distractive therapy to help them manage what they're having to deal with. All right, appreciate your support. Let me get changed and we'll get to work on our drawer. All right, let's go. Now, how best to get this off or to flush this up without damaging it. I don't want to plane it. That's too risky. Um, I think what I will do is pare that off with a chisel. Trap it in between. Oh, we still got to do the uh, the tails in the back of that, or the dovetails in the back. I think I said that yesterday. In case you don't know, I have on my bench what is called a double start thread. And what's really advantageous about it, whereas most, most, um, hardware for benches, anywhere from five to six revolutions are required to move an inch. So it's wind, 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 wind. This moves an inch in two revolutions. So the thread, there's a much steeper pitch and I don't understand the whole thing. All I know is it's great. It works fantastically. And we actually, we actually have that stuff made for us. So it's on our site if you decide to build a bench like this and you're looking for a really good hardware. Now, <clears throat> since I'm gonna be pairing that, not applying a lot of pressure, I think I'm gonna to switch to my 17 degree chisel. So if you look at that, the primary bevel is 17 degrees. There's probably a couple of degrees added to the actual tip, but it, uh, it works well. However, the downs, the, you did? You just sharpened this? Yeah. When? Oh, all right. The downside is it's not a very it's not very robust. So 
Uh, you can't pound on hardwood with it, but you can pair. I use it primarily for softwoods. But if you've had it, if you've had issues when you're do cutting dovetails in pine, the fibers crush. Try this. It's quite amazing how much of a improvement it is. Now, there's always a danger that the grain is going to be going the wrong direction. So, and yeah, I'm being particularly careful. I'm relying on a uh, end grain to end grain glue joint to hold us on, but you know what? It's not the greatest joint, but it is still. I would be very surprised if any of this work were to knock that off. I've seen lots of suggestions on there on why I didn't do this or that. But I think this will be sufficient to hold this in place until we're able to go in there and get the joint completed. So as long as that back is nice and flat and that comes from the initial preparation of the chisel, there's, that's, that's now flush. Anyway, what I was trying to avoid was having to do a whole lot of this over again. That's the reason why I didn't take uh, somebody up on the idea of just cutting off the face, redoing this piece, and then gluing that face back on because I'd have to go back and do another one of these. And I just, this wasn't my original idea, but this was, uh, this was, idea was given to me and it, I think it's gonna work really well. Now that, oh yeah. So here's where I screwed up, confession time again. Remember when we laid these out? I didn't, I don't think I mentioned this last night. I held that piece on there like that and I drew those from the underside with the intent that they would go on like that and then I turned this one around the other way. Fortunately, it was the one where the, uh, the fiber, the uh, rings were almost parallel. So even though it's flipped around, you can't really tell, but I'm, I'm just experiencing it right now because that the grain was going the, uh, the way I was chiseling. This one, it isn't, it's going the opposite. And that's why it's because I had got that turned around. So I'm just gonna reverse this and try going across. This is not gonna be fast. Okay, that's good. Now the tough one is gonna be getting these done. <sighs> Somebody else said why I didn't I didn't uh, go in there and score that first when we were chopping these out, but I didn't think it was gonna be an issue and it turned out it wasn't. Okay. Now this is back to that situation I told you about when you don't use the Kerfex 10 and you got to come in and pair these this way. This is, this is difficult. Now, one thing I could do, I could go in and I could reduce the thickness of this so I wasn't having to move as much material. Um, I don't really want to go over to the sand. The sander's the only one I would trust because any planing action is going to put a lot of, a lot of, uh, force on the wood fiber and I'm afraid that something will break off. I could sand it and not be an issue. I just don't want to accidentally hit any of this part because that is already finished. Or it's down to finished length. I uh, can't really saw it. Well, I can't think of something right at the moment. Now I should be able to pair this way. Can't take too much at a time.
I'm, uh, I've got to feel the side of that original pin with my chisel. So then I'm down there now. Oh, let me see. That's pretty close. I just, uh, I'm persisting because I see a little bit of a lip and I also see a little bit of glue. Now, I'm going to give you a little object lesson. There are people that dismiss preparing a chisel like David Charlesworth would or Monroe Robinson taught me. They say it's not necessary. But if you want to do work like this, ah, just caught a little bit of that. Uh, maybe that was glue. If you want to do work like this, the back of that chisel has to be flat. In other words, you're going to find yourself in a situation like this and you have to keep lifting. In other words, moving, 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 moving the chisel like this to finally get it to bite in. What I want that to do is I want that to start cutting as soon as I hit flat. I want that to engage the wood. Now I'm just going to go in here and see if I can don't feel anything. All right, don't feel any lip there at all. Now bring that up a little bit higher. Why do you do the one pin? Hmm? Oh, you do do the one? Uh, how are we for time? How much? Because I was going to, okay. Well, I'll finish this one. I'll do this one off camera unless we decide to do it tomorrow. But what I want to do after we get this one done, I want to go and uh, and lay out and get started on the back. Oh, here. Give me this for a second. Sure. Just because they wanted to see you. Great. Good this is shot. Jake. I got asked them, several people today say, we never get to see Jake. Who's that voice behind the camera? You getting in tight on this? Still got a ridge there, I can feel it. Are you gonna leave them proud? Mm, I'm thinking. Them off? Okay, I gotta come in here. Um I don't know. You mean before we assemble? No. After you assemble. I can either plane them I can either bring them down to this same same dimension before, but I'm thinking we're better to put bring them to put with the tailboard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, put it together and then it's supported by the tail all the way around. I'm afraid if you start planing off there, well, not if I know exactly what happened. Just like planing off end grain anywhere, you're going to start breaking off chunks on the back side. All right. Yeah, we still got a bump there.
Now I'm gonna put a lay the chisel in there like that. It seems to be straight. Okay. That's good. All right, I'll uh, say boring you with the second one, but you see, you saw what we were able to do, and I positive, and we put that back together. You will not be able to know, even though I ended up putting one on backwards. Oh, this is the one I have to think about. Shoot. So, in order to use our our uh, new, that's getting a little bit old. I'm still talking about this, the new method. I got to figure out how we're going to do this, so we'll do it together. You'll see what I mean. So this is top left. So here's our drawer. Drawer front, right, and left. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in like so. I've got the marking gauge line all the way around. Okay, so how are we going to do this? I think we can do it from here. So here's the, here's, the, uh, here's the problem. This is not as wide as this. But in order to use the offset method, we've got to be able to measure from where the two pieces would be flush, then move it this way, and then move it that way. Can't do it on the bottom, because if we do it on the bottom, we don't have enough material to come all the way up here. If we do it on the top, in other words, measure it from this side, we still have to cut material off the bottom. Come back here, Jake, please, over around here. So when we build our drawer, right around this side, when we build our drawer, there's where the, there's where the groove is going to sit, right here, right, right at the bottom of this pin. So the drawer back is going to be cut off right here because the drawer, the drawer bottom slides underneath the bottom of the drawer back. I use the word bottom too many times. So if we do it like this, I'm, th I'm just thinking out loud. If we do it like this, we move it this way, we move it that way. We still have to come over and cut that material off anyway. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to cut a little bit off the top after the fact so that it doesn't drag when you open the drawer along the bottom side of the case. And I don't think there's any problem with that. Now, normally, when I build a drawer, when I build drawers, I keep the back full size, full width, so that A, we can do this correctly, but B, what you want to do with your, if you want to get, if you want it to be perfect, and this is an exception to the rule because of the way we did this. If you want it to be perfect, you want that drawer back to, that is at first the full width of the opening you want it to you want it to occupy from here to here that's allowing for the drawer bottom so I don't want to take the I don't want to take the drawer back let me I got to say this again so that you understand this is my drawer back okay and that's how it fit in the opening so if I'm going to have to take some off the bottom and some off the top I don't want to just take a bunch of it and and put it put this essentially in a different position, right? So I want to actually take this piece from there to there as it would be as it was originally fit to the opening. I know that's splitting the hair, but that's the way I prefer to do it. Now the reason why it's not going to matter in this application is because 
we took this drawer front right out of here. The sides were, were cut square, shot on the shooting board, so they fit right there. So it's going to fit the same down here as it fits in the middle, as it fits in the top. And because the drawer back was made to fit it, it doesn't matter where that smaller than the opening drawer back is going to sit, it'll fit the same way. So that's why it's just a little bit different. All right, so that said, sorry for the windy lesson, but I assume if you're still watching, you have some level of interest. Don't forget your t-shirt. Surprise me on the upside. T-shirt and maple syrup, what a combination. So what I'm gonna do, because I had changed my gauge for something else I was doing today, I'm gonna reset it for the thickness of the saw. Remember, when you do this, don't let it rest on the plane. It rests solely on the saw. Drop that down so you know for sure it's touching. Lock it. Make sure that's locked tight. No pun intended. There's our rabbit. Somebody had asked the question. They still don't understand what the rabbit's for. Well, the rabbit is to line these two pieces up so we can move it like this and it stays exactly where we want it. Uh, Jake, you're looking at your watch. What? 27. All right, well, we can we'll at least get the, uh, we'll get it laid out. Okay, so, <laughs> do this right. Now, this gets a little bit complicated too because you're looking at this and it's like, okay, wait a minute. Now, what's the tail? What isn't the tail? So we have to kind of go through this. So we know that this is a tail. We know that this is a tail. So it's going to go tail, pin, tail, pin, tail, pin. So that means this is a pin. If this is a tail, then we have to treat this as a pin, and we have to treat this as a tail. And we go the other way, pin, tail, pin, we treat this as a tail. Or in other words, this is going to be removed, this is going to be removed, this is going to be removed. So when we're trying to figure out which side of what we should be dragging the knife on, well, we know. So we'll set that in there. Move this over. Hold that firm. So we offset to my right, so we're going to go to the left side of each tail. Well, the left side of this tail is here. The left side of this tail is right here. Hold this firm. The left side of this tail is right here. And even though we're going to cut this off, this will tell us where to cut it. So this is our tail. We're going to go to the left side of this tail. We're not going to make this cut, but when we when it comes time, we go over the table saw, we'll remove it, and we will remove it based on this line. Okay, I want to make sure, I'm not gonna, actually, I'm not going to go back and do that again in case I screw up. So there we got some good deep lines that we know our saw will sit down in and register perfectly. So now we got to go the other way, balance that, slide this over. Lock it. Okay, so I offset to my left. Now we go to the right side of each tail. So this is a tail. So we're going to go in here. This is a tail. We'll go here. Tail here. And there's a tail here, but of course there's nothing out there on the right. So now just 
it helps sometimes to hold that here so we can identify our waste. So if we're keeping this part, then we're removing this part. If we're removing that part, we're keeping this part. If we're keeping this part on this section, we're removing it on this section. If we're removing it here, we're keeping it here. If we're removing it or keeping this, we're removing this. If we're removing this, we're keeping this. And if we're re keeping that, we're removing this, right? Opposites. Now, you may be looking at this and saying, well, wait a minute. That is way too wide to fit in there. But you've got to remember, from here to here is the same as it is in the drawer front, but this is narrower. So this is actually going to end up back here somewhere. So that's why this pin looks to be a lot wider than this opening. So don't be, don't be uh, thrown off because of that. Okay, set this aside. Time check, Jake. Okay. Or right, we can go a little farther. Huh? Or should what? Why not? So what? Oh, so posted. Well, just just let me do a little bit more. All right, now we go in here, and again, we're, these are the parts we're keeping. So, when you run your lines, make sure you run your lines on the side of the kerf that you're going to keep. So I'm keeping this. So I've got this side of the kerf and I've got that side of the kerf. Well, I want to keep it on the inside because I'm going to go right down on this side of the kerf. And on this one, I'm going to do the opposite. So I'll set it up so I'm right here and I'm going to work on that side of the kerf. Remember, that's waste. This is waste. This is waste. Now, don't have enough. You can't can't do this very well, so you've got to flip it over so that you have a little more reference surface. Okay, and this is waste. So let's just saw this one, and then we'll call it quits. I had a comment today from a fellow over in a civilian contractor over in Afghanistan and uh, of course he's all locked down because of this uh, COVID thing and he said that this is one of his few bright moments in his day when he gets to watch one, one of these videos that we release so how can I shut it off early poor guy happy to be able to give him some kind of a diversion Something else I want to mention. Huh? That's good. One of our uh, our first, our first. Um, I don't have his permission to use his name yet, but I will tell you. But our first bench from our bench brigade is almost ready. We we shipped off the vice to him today, and uh, it's going to go to uh, Chris. Chris was in our last class, second last class. No. Oh, he was in May. Chris was all the way back in May. Time flies. Anyway, Chris was a uh, an Army uh, uh, right now, uh, Delta Force. So he's uh, he's thrilled to get it. All right, now get my head screwed on here. So this is what we're keeping. So I want to illuminate this side of the uh, cut. No, wait a minute now. I don't need to do that at all. Remember, this is being removed, so I don't have to cut that. It's just when I go take it to the table saw, I will cut right. I will do that cut. So while well, I've got my lamp on this side. So this is my first cut that I'm. Right down to your line. We're keeping this piece, so we cut and illuminate this side. Okay, now on this side. And 
And on this side, Jake, are you on the right side to give them good view? And this one. Now, if you're if you're witnessing dovetails for the first time in this series, then you're going to notice how much faster through dovetails are as opposed to half blinds. So what I'm going to do here, remember I've twisted my, I didn't show you how you set this up, but when you put that blade in, because it's only three inch depth of throat, you give that blade a little twist, about 30 degrees, top and bottom, so that now when you make a horizontal cut, the frame stays up like this. So when you go to drop down the kerf, you've got to lay your saw over to get that blade straightened out. Love the smell of cherry being sawn. Now I'm going to cut this one. And this will be the last thing we do tonight, but I'm going to cut this one using... Uh... Oh yeah, I probably should. i got to get that bench... I can beat on it only because there's going to be rem material removed off the top. Get that sitting level. Again, this reinforces your ability to make a plumb cut. Now, what we do here is take our chisel and come in and make a little trough. Paul Sellers, I understand, named this a knife wall, which is very descriptive. Now, the reason we do that I've got to do two things. I've got to make a perfectly perpendicular cut across the end, and I've got to make a plumb cut down the face. I've just removed the difficulty of the first because I have essentially created something that I can lay the saw right up against. And now I merely have to focus on my plumb cut. You gotta go easy because you're not it's not very deep. Okay. Now I'll just come in here and just clean up that little bit of material left. I shouldn't be using this 17 degree on this stuff. All right. Chop this? No, yes. Okay, Jake says no. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, I'm going to finish this one off camera, remember, tomorrow we'll go in, finish that one, we'll cut, and I'm pretty sure we'll finish this one. Then uh, we're going to go in and we'll cut our grooves for the drawer bottom. We'll cut, this, cut it in this one, this one, and this one. The drawer bottom I've already made, so we'll deal with, that's ready to, that's already ready. And uh, what are we going to do before we assemble? Could be getting close. But then we got to fit it, so there's still lots of time left before we find another topic. Okay, please, T-shirt, Purple Heart Project. Tell all your friends, tell everyone you know. You can go on there and order one. Wear it proudly. Thank you for your help, support. I appreciate your support. We will see you tomorrow right here.